In this video, I'm going to give an overview of some Azure fundamentals. As an overview video, we're going to discuss where Azure fits in our application lifecycle. We'll take a look at some features and at the Azure dashboard, but we won't be looking at any code in this video. This is an overview video meant for a large audience. So first of all, why Azure? Azure gives us capabilities to do something now that was a lot more difficult to do back in the 90s when I was an undergrad, and that is a complete turnkey solution that is essentially a business in a box. If you think about software development in the 90s, and really prior to cloud development, you could have a wonderful idea. But how do you actually get your idea to market? If we actually go back to the 90s, you more than likely had to put your software on a series of floppy disks or CD-ROM, shrink wrap it, and then convince a retailer to sell your product. That's a tremendous barrier to entry to get your idea in the right person's hands. Now for looking at a server-side component, in the old days you also had to provision a data center, possibly, and servers and networking, and you're really thinking about your peak day, the day when you're going to have the most activity, the day when you're going to have the most sales, and you're really planning for that day. You're buying enough hardware and enough infrastructure for that day. That day might be one day out of 365, or might be five days out of 365, but you end up spending a lot of money for really handling a peak that might only happen sporadically. So lots of barriers in the old model. Let's consider how Azure can solve some of these. So number one, distribution. We no longer need to shrink wrap our product put it on a shelf and hope somebody buys it. Instead, we can use Azure to host and distribute our application. A lot of applications these days are going to be web applications, and that's really what cloud hosting is meant for. But even if you have something like a mobile application, it's inevitably going to need a service backend, and that service can be hosted through Azure. Another big hurdle that Azure tackles is startup costs. If you think of the old days of Starting your own software company, you'd have to buy all of this hardware before you have your first customer, but not so with Azure. With Azure, you're paying by the amount of computing that you're using, and you're essentially paying as you're going. So if you're on a low budget and you want to start a company, this is a great way to do it because you're only paying for what you're using, and in the infancy of a company, you're not using much. But now let's talk about what happens when you do use more. Let's say that you're idea suddenly blossoms and becomes very popular overnight and you weren't anticipating this. Well, with Azure, we can scale very easily, which means take the same software and allow it to serve more customers. There are two ways we can scale. We can scale up, which is when we take an existing virtual machine or actual piece of hardware and add RAM to it or add processors to it. So no additional hardware, we're simply beefing up the hardware we already have. And then scale out is another concept. That's where we're actually adding more hardware or more computers to help us process. One other thing that Azure will help us solve is some value added services. And I can tell you that after teaching software development for quite a long time, don't underestimate the value of reusing something that somebody else built. So I've seen a lot of student group projects get stuck on a login screen all semester long. Don't bother writing your own login screen if Azure provides one for you. And you see, if you can take these components that are already built and assemble them together, your job as a software developer or as a manager of a software development company becomes very easy because you're reapplying things that have already been tested, already been used, and that's less custom code that you need to make. So a few of the value added components that we get from Azure, they can generally be grouped like so. Compute services is one we're going to use a lot because that's how we're going to host our website. You can also have virtual machines, which is like an operating system that's hosted in the cloud essentially. Cloud storage. This is really where a lot of cloud vendors tend to make some money because really the storage is a good metric for the usage of an application. If you have something that's very intensive for video, intensive for audio images and the like, you're probably going to have a, a fairly good demand for cloud storage. Networking. Networking. Vir virtual private network. So you have assets that are protected from the general internet. A content delivery network. Things that we use for integrating things like bootstrap into an application. And then load balancer. 
What's a load balancer? Well, think of something that has a, a peak of activity for a specified time, something like buying tickets to a concert that was just announced, or processing transactions on the day after Thanksgiving. A lot of times you'll have many, many simultaneous transactions happening, and you'll need more than one piece of hardware to process this. And so this is where load balancing comes in well, because it can take requests and it can quickly delegate them to a series of identical nodes, which could be servers, applications, computers, or something like that, which knows how to process this item. Smart load balancers also know how to handle a transaction that doesn't get fully completed and then resubmit it to another node. App host, host your application. Artificial intelligence is becoming really big now, a good way to do some machine learning and determine what pictures are alike. Internet of Things, definitely a big topic these days. You think about all the con connected devices in your home, maybe an Instant Pot, uh, one of the uh, Crock-Pots, Ring Camera, all, or, or it may, a robotic vacuum, so on and so forth. A lot of these things need something like a mobile phone as a dashboard. And Azure provides ways to manage these IoT components. Integration service bus. When you get to large industrial strength software, you'll find that one challenge is getting data down to the right places. Uh, for example, from one central server to every single retail location, or maybe every single gas station, every single automobile, whatever we're serving here, we need a way to get data to the right place. And that's what an integration service bus does. And finally, security. Security is a must-have in any application because if we don't have security, we don't have a reputation. Now, I'm about to discuss several different Azure components and how they fit together. First, I thought it'd be easy to have an animation to give this an overview because without the animation, we tend to hear things that have very similar words and it can get very confusing to understand what is what. So first of all, we have an application we're writing in Visual Studio. And if we want to host that application in Azure, we have to host it via an app service. And an app service assembles all of these other things together that we're about to talk about. It assembles an app service plan, a resource group, and a subscription. And once we have all of those, we can take our application and we can host it through this app service, which then allows other users to interact with it through a browser. So first of all, subscription. Subscription is our level of service and our cost. So you can choose high throughput, high CPU, and the cost that you would expect with that. Or you can choose a very limited amount of service and free cost for certain plans. One nice thing is that you can have multiple subscriptions. So if you're a large business, maybe some things are more mission critical than others, and you can have different subscriptions, different levels of service and different cost for each of those assets. For example, processing transactions would probably be a high level of service because that's how we make money. But signing up for the get together potluck luncheon over the weekend probably doesn't need to have 24-7, uptime, so you can see how that would have a different subscription. And because we can have different subscriptions, we also will manage access here. The most common subscription is pay-as-you-go. A couple other options are free, which is your first trial account, and then also there are some member deals that are offered, but pay-as-you-go is the most common. Resource groups is a list of resources that you're using for an application. These are the value-added components that already live on Azure that you can tie together like a series of building blocks to build an application. So databases, both SQL and NoSQL. Storage, JSON storage, binary storage. Containers, things like Kubernetes, where we can take an application and we can run it in a container, which is essentially a very lightweight operating system with just what's needed to run that application. Internet of Things, we talked about earlier. And then DevOps, just about every project can use DevOps. This is where we can have a pipeline that builds our application, run tests automatically, and can do other things like static code analysis. And if we decide our code is up to par and everything passes, we can even automatically deploy to production if we wish. So since a resource group is managing all of these resources, the resource group is also storing metadata for all the resources. Here's a look at a resource group that I put together 
for an application that I have deployed. So you can see we have a couple things here. We have it associated with an app service and an app service plan. You might remember those from that funnel animation I had earlier. But take a look as we scroll around here and you can see that there are several things that we can add to our resource group and they're categorized very well here. So analytics, how are users actually using our system? Compute, do we need any kind of Kubernetes service? Do we need any kind of hosting service? So on and so forth. DevOps, how are we going to manage our pipeline? Database is definitely a big one. Do we want to use a traditional SQL database? Do we want to use a NoSQL database? So this is where we have all those building blocks that we can put together for our application. App Service Plan. This is discussing the resources and the cost that we want for a specific app service, which is where we're going to deploy our web application or our service application. This falls underneath the subscription that we've already de determined. So we have a pay-as-you-go subscription, so within that, we can determine our app service plan with a specific level of service and associated cost. Do we, do we want dedicated CPUs? Do we want a lot of memory, a lot of hard drives, so on and so forth? Then we can get that and we're going to need to pay for it. On the other hand, uh, do we need limited computing and we just want to try things out as a developer? Okay, well, then we can try the free plan and there are many plans in between. So you see the plan, the cost, the subscription that this falls within, resource group, so on and so forth. Now, what's nice is that once we've deployed our application, we can come down here and see some usage metrics, and that will give a good idea of, did we choose the right plan? Were we too ambitious? Are we paying for too much? Or are we paying for too little and we're starting to hit some bottlenecks? Finally, we put this all together in an app service. So app service is what we need to deploy our app. Uh, we assemble our app service, subscription, resource group. We put it all together for one application. And then the app service is how we can build and deploy our web applications and view our web applications. And then we can scale up and scale out, as we talked about before, either adding more resource to an existing machine or adding more machines. And we know that the app service is tightly coupled with an app service plan. I'll have a separate video that shows how to create and deploy a simple application into Azure from Visual Studio. Little preview of that though. Here when we go to publish from Visual Studio, you'll notice several words that sound fairly similar. So first of all, we have our site URL, which is where that's going to get deployed. And then we have resource group, which are the resources that we're using when we're deploying this application. If we haven't determined this yet, or if we want to create a new one, we can come up here and click New, and then we can specify our new resource group and our app service plan. Here's an example of what that screen looks like. We create and then we publish. And then if all works well, we have our hosted website and we can interact with it just like so. So this video has been an overview of fundamental Azure components. I certainly hope this video has been helpful and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.